Hi everybody, all my followers, be welcome to another video. The video today is on a 2000 and... 2000 and what? Okay, 2012, 2 liter CDTI. Um, right, today is absolutely freezing to start with. Um, the X3 is now ready, I've started this morning, I never went for a drive. Well, I don't even know why I'm showing you that. I don't even know if I'm going to put a video out for it, as it was something so simple. Anyway, um, the, the only reason why I mentioned this is because I'm most likely going to have to go for a drive with this one. So I don't know if I'm going to drive that one, even though I've done the video for it. It's all, I'm not going to record anything else on it, but it might worth go for a drive or I will leave that for the owner. Um, because this one definitely I might gonna have to go for a drive so what the problem is with this car is a gearbox related issue now I was told that uh, the car had something with the gearbox the gearbox was sent to be repaired or they replaced the gearbox uh, not even sure now um, anyway the complaint with the car is that the car um, is kind of jeddering or is clanking on downshifts uh, apparently it upshifts okay uh, when it downshifts you can hear you can definitely feel a sort of a bunk or a, a, no a bunk it, it, it's, it's really harsh downshifting I think that's the word um, so again in re repeat myself it upshifts okay it downshifts really harsh um, I haven't drove the car um so i don't know exactly what it does um when it was brought to me it uh, was brought to me under the impression that all it needs is an adaptation and um, that's what this uh, garage was told they had to do uh, apparently they don't have the means to do it um not really sure anyway let's gonna start the car uh, scan the car that's the first thing i'm gonna do scan the car look for codes um and go from there really see what uh, why he needs okay and you've seen the sign of the bonnet open i just wanted to show you battery is i, I won't say flat flat but it's extremely extremely weak so let's kind of plug in the battery charger let it charge for a couple minutes and try again. Oh dear, I completely forgot that I had that turbo in there. Oh, that's there for like a week. I completely forgot that was dropped in there for me to have a look at it. Oh man, I'm gonna have to come up with an excuse. <laughs> right, now, now on the serious side, it was dropped there for about, not a week, but for a few days. But honestly, I completely forgot until I, I walked now inside the car and I look at it and I thought, oh, oh. <laughs> well, I think it's a broken core anyway, that too, really needs a new core. Uh, I haven't done a video for cores for a long time, even though I, I carried on doing them. Anyway, deviating from this car. Right, um, so the battery is, in, is charging now. Uh, let's try this again, see if it starts. If it starts, we leave it running. And I will disconnect the charger. There we go, up and running. So I'm gonna disconnect the charger now and then we'll do a scan on the car. Yes, yes, I haven't renewed my subscription yet. So let's scan the car. Uh, let me try uh, auto scan. Okay, let's let's gonna scan the gearbox on this is the AF40. Right, how come? Right, the revs are bouncing a little bit. It was running absolutely perfect up to now. Not really sure why they are bouncing now. Okay. Let's try this. So it's the Aster J. 2012 as I said it's kind of 
settling now. But it's still bouncing a little bit. Uh, start, stop, blah, blah, blah. stop and start. I don't think is it is he has it. Let's do his thing, and we'll carry on from there. Okay, so we have plenty of faults to work with. Although some of these faults, most likely, they are old faults. Uh, we still have a little bit of a bouncy on the revs. Um, just very faint, but the engine definitely kind of changes its tone. So very, very weird. Okay, anyway, the engine is not what I was asked to look at. There's no engine light anyway. It was an engine light when I started the engine, wasn't it? <laughs> well, I won't be surprised, so let me start this engine again. Uh, engine light, yeah, there is an engine light. Anyway, we let it to warm up a little bit more and uh, we'll go from there. But as I said, that's not what the issue. But we'll look at the engine just to see if there's anything to do with our gearbox. Anyway, just curiosity. Uh, let's look at the trouble codes. And we have... Right, so... Past and face. So history, not history. Fuel rail high pressure. Not history, okay. History, history, misfire detected, fuel level low, fuel level low, yeah, it's a little bit low, but cylinder one variation, cylinder one pressure, history, 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 <laughs> uh, immobilizer key incorrect, okay, so most of these codes most likely will clear this. We'll see if anything comes back when we restart the engine. At the moment, the engine is still running. Uh, let's gonna go to our gearbox. Uh, as I said, this is the AF40, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let's just uh, have a look, see if there's anything here for it. Uh, uh, so the engine is the A20DTH AW. F80. I could swear this is the AF40. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, I could swear this was the gearbox was the AF40, but I might be wrong. Anyway, trouble codes. Hold on, there's a trouble code at the back. Okay. Ah. Okay. So these codes, the, the 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 code on this gearbox most likely was something to do with engine system, and would ask me to go to the engine system and look for the codes. Uh, quite common to have this sort of stuff. So low voltage, you would expect this. Okay, let's go back. Uh, instrument cluster. I'm just trying to see if there's anything here that would somehow, okay, again, that would somehow would be related to my gearbox. So there's no really codes for the gearbox at the moment. Uh, so I might have to go for a drive. Okay, Shyamalan from, from seat. Front seat eating control module. What's going on with the heat? Well, I wasn't even looked. I asked to look at these, but just curiosity. Driver seat history, high resistance. Okay, uh, which makes sense because I have no heating, no heated seats, uh, no heated seat on the driver's side. I already tried because obviously it's quite cold. The seats were absolutely freezing as they are leather when I got in. And you put it in, it comes on, and it goes off after a little while. So most likely you have a bad um, 
a bad um, uh, cushion uh, for the eater on this seat. I have actually a video for one, uh, which I might put it on the description below. Um, I have I have had this issue in the past, and I made a video for it. Uh, actually, a car that came from the same garage. Anyway, I was not asked to look at this, so let's gonna go back from here uh, and I think at this point since I'm at this point I think I might gonna go for a drive okay so all these lost communications most likely is due to this uh, low battery while cranking um, so what we'll do now is um, I think I'm gonna have to go for a drive I might just quick look at some live data see if there's anything that stands out uh, but if not, we'll go for a drive um, and we'll go from there, really. Um, see exactly what the car does. And then if he needs readaptation, we'll do it. But yeah, just stay tuned. Okay, following day and the car actually went and came back. Uh, but let me take you through the story. Um, right, so... I think on the last clip I was saying I would be taking the car for a drive, which I did. And I could not see nothing wrong with it. So I drove a little bit. The car was downshifting okay, upshifting okay. The only thing I've noticed was that, actually, before I tell you, because initially I was never told that this was an issue. But now it is. So let, let, let me... Let me back a little bit and, and tell you everything uh, in the right order. So I went for a drive, car down shifts okay, shifts up okay, really smooth, changing gears, no issues at all. So there was only one thing that I've noticed. And I thought, okay, maybe, maybe. So what I've done was I've done a reset uh, to the learned values on the gearbox. Okay, there's no footage for that because at this point when I've seen the car driving okay, I was actually to scrap this video. It was absolutely pointless. Um, and I don't even know yet if I'm going to publish it or not. But yeah, so I reset the, the LAN uh, adaptations, etc, etc. Car carried on driving pretty much the same. I haven't really felt any difference. Um, and the, the, the reason, the problem the car had which was the reason for me to go and reset the, the the adaptations is a little bit intermittent so after I did the reset I couldn't really feel that problem but eventually it came back not the, the the initial fault but this 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 fault now anyway at this point I couldn't really see nothing wrong with the car so I ran this garage I explained, I, I asked them to explain me exactly what the problem was. Uh, I got a little bit more information. So all they did on this car was no gearbox replacement or anything like that. Uh, they just did an oil change. That's all they did on the gearbox. Um, so basically was saying, oh, the car is really harsh when down shifting, etc., etc. So I said, look, so I drove to them. I got in the passenger seat and I told them, go for a drive. Show me what the problem is. He went for a drive and... Right and behold, he goes, well, he's not doing it now. That's okay, but I said, look, but first time I drove the car, the car was driving exactly like this. So we got to the point where obviously I explained to him, we had a little bit of a chat and uh, we decided, that, okay, look, drive it, carry on driving the car and, and see how it goes. Um, so when he dropped me back home, uh, he was engaging, he, he parked here right in front of my house and we, we shot for about five minutes and then when he was about to take off the car did this and let me show you exactly what he does which initially never told me this was a problem but then he said oh this you see he does this uh although initially he never told me nothing about it i've noticed this myself um but well whatever so why does is the following when i put reverse i don't know how good it's going to come out on camera but So I can feel, so when I put on reverse, I can feel the clutch or the gearbox engaging and I can feel the torque going to the wheels very smooth, very, very softly, yeah? 
when I put on drive okay I didn't check the camera on purpose believe me the car there's this really ash so when engage drive rather than do it like it does when it goes on reverse which is really smooth you can barely feel it when you put on on drive let me see if I can show you this again okay so I I hope it comes on camera uh, okay um, but it does the, it doesn't do all the time so now he's doing it but if I if I stay here doing this for a little bit or randomly oh there we go randomly he stops doing it I said to him to me this is a mechanical problem on the gearbox uh, either solenoids even though on live data they all look okay uh, solenoids clutch uh, I don't know torque converter maybe something along those lines I'm not a gearbox expert so I'm not gonna be here try to claim I know something when I don't so the guy went and uh, he rang someone that he uses which apparently is a gearbox expert which I'm not gonna even dispute that uh, he uses he told me he uses many times in the past successfully so I'm, I'm going to presume he's someone that knows about this uh, and basically ah, one quick important thing is is there is no codes on a box okay there is no codes on the gearbox uh, so he, he, he rang him about taking the car to him and basically he was told and this I'm gonna make the shop the guy that brought me the car are gonna make his words okay so he was told that the reason why the car is not throwing any codes is because he needs a software update now yes it could be that there is an update for this car that will either look at different parameters and it's gonna trigger faults that obviously the initial software it doesn't uh, that's why software updates exist uh, in, in a sense or it could be a software update that obviously corrects something on the gearbox as the gearbox wears out uh, now he asked me if I could do it this is a 2012 so it's really borderline with what I can do with the MDI I'm gonna try see if there is an available software for this if there is we're gonna do it and if there isn't I have a plan B uh, but for now um, let's just go into um, turn the MDI on and see if we can do it or not okay that's done now let's go in to carry on and there we go so it could be exactly what he says in there that the version that the car has is actually higher than the version I have here so but let's just quick check if you see your data so let me see if it tells me when was updated last would be great if you could tell me it's just the part numbers no no oh, that's it look Programming date, programming date 24-04-2012. So uh, the, my only option now is is online, but it's very tricky to find out if um, if it's going to be a new software update for this or not. Um, right, let me think and see how I'm going to do this. Honestly, and I told the guy, I don't think this is the problem with the car. He's now relying on what the gearbox expert told him that he needs a software update. I, I strongly believe this is nothing to do with the software, but right. Uh... Oh dear me. Oh dear me. Okay, let me think. Let me think. Okay, and just before I jump into my next uh, plan, I would say, uh, I thought I would just run a, um, a GDS diagnostics. Uh, and uh, just I'm just under uh, ECU information. Uh, and just to confirm, obviously, it's, it's a better user interface here. But as you can see here, uh, date programmed Tuesday, 24th of April, 2012. 
so this is my end model software module so software versions etc etc and as I scroll this down I speed can burst so there we go so it was programmed most likely when the car was manufactured I would say uh, possibly has never been programmed again if there is a software update available or not I'm not 100% sure uh, only online I guess I would be able to find out um, but uh, let's go back just quickly check if there is just to make sure but if the maxi sees reads no codes I'm pretty sure that GDS2 will see no codes either uh, and there we go no DTCs stored so this is not throwing any faults which to me I, I strongly believe this is going to be a mechanical issue somewhere uh, specific to see uh, no there's nothing here so yeah so that's about it uh, configuration and reset yeah this is the same as the maxi sees this is the one I've done oh, I don't want to do it again but this is the one I've done with the maxi sees which was reported successfully um, so yeah so that's where where we are at the moment. Uh, so let me try something else. If it doesn't work, then well, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, Plan B. We're gonna we're gonna go online to make sure we get the la the latest uh, updates for this car. Uh, I only have a couple of hours, so I need to be quick. I can't be here wasting too much time. So we're gonna go online. Hopefully, using the Hold on. So start SPS. So I'm going to do a little bit off camera until we start the flashing procedure. Uh, I'm going to try to see if I can do this using the Maxis, which I think, or the Hotel VCI, which I think I can. Uh, so let me get everything ready and uh, we'll carry on from there. Okay, and after installing an old version of Java, because Java is not supported any longer uh, by Chrome, so I had to go and install a older version, etc, um, etc. Et so I'm now pretty much ready to go, as you can see here. Okay. Um, I actually went in there onto SPS Info. And there is a software update. I'm not sure if it is above the one that's on the car at the moment, uh, but pro possibly it is. Uh, the description for the fix are, I should have showed you that. I might show you at the end, which probably is going to be a little bit not in order, but uh, it tells you that there is an improvement on uh, downshifts from fifth to fourth and from third to second, which at this point, okay. That was one of the complaints, so it could be that is, is it could be that, but the car is not doing that anymore. All, the only thing the car is doing, as I explained, and we will most likely go for a drive at the end, is um, is this when you engage when stationary, when you engage D uh, drive, it does that sort of harsh engagement. Anyway, we are now here to reprogram. As you can see, it gives you the option for the maxi flash. I already knew it would support the maxi flash. So we're going to press next at this point. So engine on, uh, sorry, ignition on, engine off. So the charger is plugged in. This is very similar as the offline version. All these steps here is all the same. So is it 2012? So let's kind of drop down this a little bit. Let me see if I can keep the phone focused because with the glare. Oh dear me. Okay, it's a little bit tricky. Okay, it's a... <laughs> seriously. Okay, let me try to do this a little bit closer. So it's an Astra J. And it's going to be funny if I now get the same message saying there is no... That there is no newer version. I will be very very disappointed okay so he detected the car okay so it's all the same as as, as the offline 
If there is no newer version, if the car is actually updated with the latest version, I'm going to be very, very, very angry because I've just spent 45 quid, oh sorry, 50 pounds, which is the cost for two hours access. Come on. You get loads of warnings when he's scanning. Oh no, actually there is. Okay, so uh, oh, actually I don't need to show you. So there he is. So the the current software is that one. As if you go back well on JDS, you're going to see that's the the, the software in there. All these numbers they match. Uh, this is the new versions and tells you what the what the improvements are. So we're just going to press next. And we should just now allow him to do his things. So he's now, okay, there we go. Flashing the module. It's actually quite quick, so I might just do a live, or a live, I'll just carry on recording. So it might be that this gearbox expert actually knew what we were talking about however I'm quite I'm quite of a believer that this is not going to sort the problem this is going to be something else but hey I might be wrong I might be wrong So you get loads of warnings when the car is flashing because obviously, okay, it's just finished because obviously modules goes offline, etc., etc. <coughs> okay, so there we go. Warranty claim code, repair orders. So gives you all this stuff. Uh, I could print this, but there is really no point unless I can print this to a PDF. If I can print to a PDF, I will definitely save this. XPS. Yeah, that will do as well. Why not? So let's kind of go to desktop. Let's just put Astra J T C M programming. So I will know what it is. Let's save that. We'll press new. And while I'm here, guys, I'm not really gonna. I'm, I'm not going to take you through this. But while I'm here, what I'm gonna do is while I have these two hours, uh, I'm just gonna update everything that needs to be updated on the car. We'll make some good use of it. So if there's any other modules that requires updates, I'm gonna do it. Um, and that's about it for now. So then in the end, we'll just go for a drive and see if we have any improvement. Okay, and I thought I would quick. Uh, take you along with me on the last module I'm trying to update which is the instrument cluster uh, I went through every single other module on the car um, ECU engine ECU had an update for it um, then a lot of modules they just didn't have any newer software um, so I obviously I couldn't update those I could just reflash the same software but pointless uh, so this is the last one I don't know yet if there is a software update for it or not so we're just gonna press next and the calibration selected is the current calibration in the control module so again the cluster has the latest software ready nothing came out new since the car was launched uh, so that's it guys all the modules are updated I still have what's the time now that uh, laptop I think the time is wrong on it if I'm not mistaken Actually, it's not. Anyway, I still have about two hours um, of usage of SPS um, online. If I had my Corsa here, I probably would take the advantage and would, would try to update it, see if there's anything available. But I don't. Mrs. is at work today, and she obviously took the car with her. Um, I think while I'm here, and just as, as curiosity, so if you don't want to watch this, just skip it. I'm just going to go quick through what this online 
uh, version gives you. Um, obviously, you can subscribe to a lot of more stuff. Uh, I haven't done it because I only want to update the... So I'm going to do cancel here. So this is the home. Let me see if I'm still... Yeah. So, okay. Okay, so this is what you have access to. Okay. Uh, so if I go to information calibration, so if I get this... And now, so this is what I checked, I, I showed you earlier. So if I came, for example, on my TCM, if you remember, where is my TCM? Uh, transmission control module. So if I press now next, if I go to programming, next, and there we go. So this is what I, I've seen that there, there, there was a software update and what was the improvement um, if I go now back let me see let me close this if I go back now and I go for example on the instrument cluster as we have just seen it and programming next so there we go so this is all the, it doesn't tell you that there is any updates. So only one came out, which is the one we had on the car. Um, you also have, so that's the SPS info. You have the SPS, which is just where we came out from. Okay, so security access, there's no point to go there. This is just to give you access to um, uh, level three to tech two. There's no point. Uh, RPO code display, what this would do, display RPO codes. Okay, all right, okay, I got you. So, is the codes, oh, that's interesting. Okay, so RPO codes. So this is my codes for my car. And SB, open service box. I don't think, no, I didn't pay for this to be honest. Uh, so obviously I will not have access to this. Um, but yeah, so this is, is, is what you have. Uh, in case if you are interested, my session already uh, finished. But you go to public service box pedro.com um, but they do actually have if I do this so they do actually have access to a lot of stuff uh, I would have to log in again but I don't want to have to um, you would have access to a lot of documentation for Pedro Citroen etc all this and you can do SPS programming online since uh, once you pay for your subscription uh, which as I said I paid for two hours and that gave me access to online the most up-to-date um, stuff for, in this case, for Vauxhall uh, or Opel. So I finished with this car uh, on this. So just very, very quickly now, um, I'm going to come out of this. So I'm finished with this. And finished with this. Actually, let me do one thing here. Uh, okay, so I'm going to turn off the laptop. I'm going to log in into JDS again just to show you that the car has been updated, updated on the same menu uh, um, that we've seen when we've seen the car was updated or the, the, the software in there was from 2012, even because I want that to show to the owner that the car has been indeed updated. Um, and, uh, and then we go for a test drive. And I'll tell you if I improved anything. Okay, just a very quick show you. Same menu again. So as you can see in there now. Date programmed Friday, 11 December 2020. Uh, uh, so that's it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go for a test drive. Uh, trust me on this one. I haven't moved this lever yet from here. Uh, I'm not going to do a reset of the learning uh, procedures because... Well, I've done it yesterday, but during the software update, most likely that's all wiped out anyway. So, I'm going to do it now. 
I'm very, very suspicious that the software update would have done nothing, um, anything to it. But let's gonna try. So let's gonna move it to reverse, just as normal, and drive. Ooh, I actually made a difference. Really? You actually made a difference. That said, and this is very important, before was quite intermittent. Sometimes it would do it, sometimes it wouldn't. So, it was a little bit of uh, hit and miss. So, I don't know. I'm gonna go for drive. Yeah, it's engaging absolutely perfect. So, I'm gonna go for a drive and and then I'll, I guess I will uh, I will finish this video I'm gonna wait for the customers feedback for the owner feedback and I guess I will update the description of the video if the problem came back or not uh, but let's gonna go for a drive and go from there okay and the car is driving perfect but it was driving well before uh, I confess it's still going from park to drive with no jeddering with no knocking uh, it's not doing that anymore uh, now at this point uh, because this problem was intermittently before as well I'm not sure uh, the fact that I update the software and the first time at home when I moved it to drive he actually didn't do what he was doing is a sign that maybe I was wrong and the software update actually resolved the issue um, obviously when you uh, when you look at the description of the fix for the software update which was to obviously reduce or to eliminate eliminate whatever that was the, the the poor shifting or hard shift from 5th to 4th and from 3rd to 2nd uh, I'm 90% sure if this car takes off in 2nd or 1st or gear so when I put it to drive I'm not sure if that's engaging 1st gear or 2nd gear a lot of the transmissions they take off in 2nd gear so so all that would be kind of related or it would make sense uh, the description of the fix with the fact that the car takes off in second gear maybe I'm not 100% sure uh, oh no you actually engage first gear engage first gear I can see that on live data so park look at that value in there so which is the current gear so park reverse neutral and when I go to drive it says gear 1 so it doesn't take off now, it doesn't uh, drive off in second gear, drives off in first gear. Uh, guys, yes, the software update goes along with the initial complaint of the harsh downshifts. So it doesn't really go along with the, what I was doing here, but it could be related. Uh, maybe someone out there will, will, will be able to... to to clarify a little bit more I'm not a gearbox expert now whatsoever uh, I've learned a lesson here um, with this because I, I was guys I don't know if this is sort of the problem but I was convinced this would be a mechanical problem because of the way the car was driving quite good and was only when it was engaging drive um, at standstill Still, you guys know I have a lot of delay on my videos so what I will do is if 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 you go now on the description and there's nothing there um, that means either these actually fixed the problem or if it didn't uh, the car didn't came to me to get sorted um, if I have um, if I have any updates on this car in the meantime I will put them on the description below um, so you guys know exactly if these worked on the long run or not but for the time being that's it guys the problem is fixed I would say um, and I think I'm gonna wrap up this video because it's probably a quite long video by now uh, a video that I was not even planning to publish at some point <laughs> so anyway guys I'm gonna carry on driving for a little bit longer uh, just to make sure but so far so good so uh, with no further ado guys um, 
hope there's something on this video you guys have learned uh, some useful, useful information and um, if you do still have any questions any comments please put them below and like always thanks for watching